Hey guys, Alan Stewart here with BNB Yacht Designs, and I've got a, another update on our BNB racers in the 2022 Everglades Challenge. And Facebook is usually the most up to date info. Uh, I'm going to show this video. This is from yesterday. And this is Matey Thor and Argonaut on a Sea Pearl 21. Um, in Gasparilla Sound, but I think it gives a good idea of the conditions they had yesterday, at least for the part of the day. Um, and in this video, we've got uh, them on their C Pearl 21, but we also see uh, Paul and Brian in the Core Sound 17 right down there. Very cool. So I'll jump over to uh, the tracker, and this is uh, Brian and Paul, uh, Tasa and Kapakahi, I think. And let's see where they're at. So they are currently down here, right at Big uh, Boca Grande Inlet. Uh, and looks like they are camped. This is as of 7.30 p.m. last night. Today is 5.45 in the morning on uh, Monday. Yes, Monday. So this is starting uh, day three. The racers started Saturday morning. Um, so this is the end of day two. They made it to Boca Grande and uh, so here they've entered the top of Pine Island Sound. So that video was taken uh, probably right in this area here. And um, so good job, guys. And I will jump backwards to um, go through our list again. So we'll go check on Blackbeard. So yesterday, Blackbeard was not tracking. I sent him a text, and he said, yeah, he the link got broken and they got it fixed so now he started tracking here yesterday at 6 47 p.m. and there he is in the lower part of Pine Island Sound so it looks like they camped right here um, off of York Island they actually went up into this little creek which is cool so there's 10 30 p.m. and I'm sure they are uh, probably still sleeping um, this is a really sweet little anchorage. I anchored here, uh, right here in my sailing canoe when I did the UFC. Uh, there's usually a bunch of boats anchored here. It's real pretty calm, but if they had an east wind, uh, it probably wasn't all that calm right here. So that's probably why they tucked in. Um, and it's real shallow here, but it's a deep water little anchorage right there. So, uh, let's check the wind real quick. Uh, I'll refresh this page. Let's see Monday. Okay, so here's the current conditions and they are anchored Where are we we're down here? Um, they're anchored right here Right there and they currently have uh, Yeah, 12 gusting to 17 um, Out of the east southeast. So yeah, they weren't getting any shelter there but they were probably dog tired and they saw that little cove and maybe they ducked into there. So you can see they're tacking here. Um, so when you get a bunch of tacks, you know, you can sort of average out the wind direction. So it looks like it was, you know, east, southeast is what the, the forecast shows. So there's not really, you know, they could have gone over to here maybe, but um, there's a lot of shallow junk in the way there. And that's a pretty far distance. So let's check on uh, Breeze Rider. Remember, Breeze Rider is sailing solo in a 17 Mark III. And looks like he has just gone into stump. Uh, 10.59 PM was his last track point. So it looks like he went outside yesterday, or he did go outside yesterday. Uh, let's see, I thought he, okay, he went inside to camp and then he came right back out. 
so he came right back out at 654 in the morning so yesterday he did this leg you can see he must have had a little light error there and he made it to stump so he's anchored and probably camping or his tracker shut off one or the other um, I didn't see a, a note that he had made it to the checkpoint so I think this is up to date and he probably is waking up right now getting ready to head to checkpoint one uh, I think that might mean he missed the deadline I don't know I think the checkpoint deadline was yesterday um, I'll have to check on that but uh, in any case he probably doesn't care um, so good job uh, breeze rider keep on going and uh, let's check Greybeard. So Greybeard uh, and Chef Ramen, father and son team. Looks like they did what I would have done uh, with that kind of wind. They kept tack. They got around Sanibel Island, and they just decided to get up into the beach. This is a good move because the water is a lot calmer down here. You know, the catamarans made a beeline for Marco Island, but. Um, this is a good this is a good way to do it. So they made it here by 7:40 p.m. They probably still had some daylight, and then they were able to do this leg at night. And look at how straight and consistent this track is. I'm sure they were sleeping this whole way. One of them was asleep, the other one was driving. And smart move because if you check the wind, um, yeah, I mean you don't want to be out here. You want to be over here. So. Uh, you lose a little bit of time doing that, of course, because you have to get a little bit out of your way, but a lot smoother of a ride. Um, looks like they had some light wind here or just really slow going. They might have been doing a bunch of tacking. Probably not. Um, so they probably had it. They were probably going right into the wind because here they probably tacked when they got a shift. And um, sorry about that. And let's see, they are all the way down here past Marco Island. So it looks like they're getting headed a little bit. And this is 514, so this is 30 minutes ago, uh, approximately. And uh, they're doing 4.5 knots from their last point. They're probably going to think about putting a tack in pretty soon because they need to get over to um, Indian River uh, uh entrance here to get I make this big yeah here's the checkpoint down here oh no I'm sorry that's checkpoint three what am I doing they need to get in to here so, <laughs> there we go um, they need to get to Chokoloski they're probably gonna attack real soon if they haven't already and head over to Indian Key which is right here the Indian Key River Pass to get into here and hopefully they have deep water I don't know what the tide is I didn't check but um, you know, hopefully they're timing that better than I am. And let's check on Pink Dog. I think I have him pulled up. Uh, that is toss off. Pink Dog. All right, Pink Dog and Chang Busy. Um, all right, here we go. Zooming in on the checkpoint. Okay, interesting. They decided uh, they came in on the inside. Remember, they got to the checkpoint yesterday, and here they are at 10:18 uh, a.m. Yesterday, they got to the checkpoint. So, um, so all day yesterday, they were doing the next leg. So they opted to go back out Stump Pass. Well, they didn't go in Stump Pass because they were on the inside, but they elected to go out Stump Pass to head south and so by doing that they avoid this little stretch here where there is some boat traffic there's a ferry that runs across and of course down here there is the Boca Grande Causeway Bridge uh, that is a bridge you have to uh, call to open or take your mask down to go through this is an old railroad bridge that you have to sail through but it is uh, not blocked. But it is a little scary at night because it's a pretty narrow uh, entrance. But they could have come down here and gone out, um, gone out by Bird Key. This is another pretty big inlet, and I've done that as well. If you want to get out early, you do have to go 
you know miss the sandbar but if you want to avoid that bridge you can do this but you still have to do this narrow stretch which can be quite slow if the wind is light so this is probably a good move I mean it only took them you know one two three four five it took them an hour to get to this point you know who knows maybe it, maybe it was a good choice um, this is an interesting area too uh, here because there's lots of sandbars and stuff around Boca Grande Inlet so there's some shoaling here. I'll bet this was kind of fun. And then you get into the deep water and those big uh, swells and current coming through here, rushing in and out. Probably it was going out, judging by their tracks. And then they got across here and uh, looks like they hit the beach. Uh, big sandbar here. So um, they're headed probably upwind or on a reach here. And then they tacked and uh, let's see what happened here looks like they're anchoring 8 28 p.m and 5 13 a.m so that tells me that they have turned on their spot tracker this morning um and or they or they ran it all night but it doesn't look like it because there's not enough points so they're probably awake making coffee uh they may have already left yet already but they're gonna have to go out and and, and they'll be able to see the sandbar in daylight they're probably waiting for daylight and they will head down uh, the coast here, uh, I guess, on the outside, or maybe, yeah, they'll probably stay on the outside. Um, so there's an update on Pink Dog. And uh, we have Tasa and Kapakahi. Uh, we just looked at them, um, I think, didn't we? Yeah, they are camped, that's right. And uh Let's check on SpongeBob. I got him pulled up as well. I have not looked at this yet. All right, SpongeBob. We remember he backtracked and uh, was going back the way he came. So it looks like yesterday he backtracked up to Bokelia Island and went in Shell Pass and is having dinner with someone or something. Or maybe he lives here. Um, I don't remember I don't remember where he said he lives but maybe he went home um, in any case he is hanging out uh, on Bokelia Island um, and 1244 p.m. so um, maybe he's doing some repairs I'm not sure um, I know this area pretty well uh, in 2020 um, uh, my dad and I broke the EC-22 mast right about here, and we landed on the beach somewhere here with um, skinny jeans, stopped when we stopped to make sure we didn't need any help, and we, um, we limped back to the checkpoint. So I'm familiar with this area. I've never gone through uh, Matlachka, Mat Matlachka, so I don't know how you pronounce it, pass, but... Um, Anyway, that's weird. I, I don't know why he's doing that, but um, hopefully everything is okay. And um, that's about it. We'll look back at the wind forecast here. Um, oh, yeah, the we've had two finishers already that I know of. Um, the two fast catamarans have already finished the race. So that's not totally unexpected with good wind. You know, they're doing 8, 9, 10 knots uh, upwind even, so... Let's just look over here at, uh, you know, right around Marco Island and see what kind of conditions we've got in the forecast. So today, uh, we're at, you know, right now we've got 13 gusting to 18. Let's just switch it to gusts. Um, 8 a.m., 13 to 18. And let's look at, you know, sort of midday. We're gonna have a shift to the south a little bit, so that'll be great. <laughs> great for everybody trying to get, you know, from Marco, like Pink Dog and them, they're gonna be headed down this way. It's gonna be on the nose. Um, and tonight, um, more of the same. And overnight, it's gonna be lighter a little bit uh, out of the east. But then Tuesday, just more, looks like just more, um, more southeast winds coming through 11 to 14 uh, and that continues all the way through Wednesday 
Um, and when we last, uh, Graham and I studied this, uh, the wind coming through, it wasn't until Saturday that the big shift came through. It looks like Thursday evening, there's something that comes through. Let's switch to there. A little light wind. We'll do. We'll zoom out and look at the bigger picture here. Uh, but it really didn't shift until Saturday, and even that that has gotten pushed back. So this doesn't come through until now, like Saturday, Sunday. Even there's this big front that comes through, and Sunday we get the big winds, uh, 18 to 24 out of the north. Would have been nice to have that last Sunday. But um, I think it's going to be headwinds for everybody that finishes. Um, and some people won't finish because of that. So so there you go. This is the, um, the Monday morning update, the beginning of day three. Um, and our racers are doing really well um, out in front. We have Greybeard um, and Chef Ramen. And, and I expect they will make it to... Um, Chokoloski here probably uh, probably by um, probably by lunchtime I would guess and so they'll be well they'll either camp or they'll um, you know continue on their way but it's going to be this is going to be a tough upwind slog and there's not a lot of places along here to take a break so uh, not sure what they're going to do. They might, if they get in later, they might camp and wait till the morning to leave. Oh, also depends on the tides. They might not make it in till dark. You just never know. Um, if they're fighting the tide and they have to wait for the tide to switch to even get into Chokoloski, that's a possibility. Um, and the mud could of course slow them down. So we will continue to watch closely and like I said, check the Water Tribe Facebook for the latest, uh, the latest updates. Um, you can choose, um, you know, recent posts as opposed to uh, recent comments. That will give you the most up-to-date news. So, like the last thing posted here was um, was John uh, Thor, Mady Thor. These guys um, looks like they're camped and. Uh, so there's a, there's a shot of the Knacker 17. Those were the, that was the second place finisher into Key Largo. And here we have Gamera and Chainsaw. Um, they were the overall winners at Key Largo. Awesome job. So very cool. And, you know, all the other updates. And, of course, the Water, the Water Tribe Forum has the cross-posting uh, where if you just want to see pictures, um, you won't get all the comments, but you will see the latest pictures. Um it looks like a good picnic spot there. Nate Dog and Andy Man on Picnic Key. Um, I didn't see any pictures of our guys in here, any new pictures, but uh, we will keep watching today. So, all right, that is the uh, that is the update, and I will talk to you guys later.